Hey guys, what's good? Welcome back to JDB Selects. You should already know by the thumbnail, uh, but we are doing another predicted teams list video today, this time the Manly Sea Eagles. So let's just rip straight into it. The Sea Eagles were very underwhelming in 2023, missing out on the finals again, coming in at 12th on the ladder with a 45% win rate and a positive points difference of just plus six. The Sea Eagles didn't manage to string together more than two wins in a row in the entire season, and their reliance on Tommy Turbo really showed throughout that season. They are a completely different side with Tom in it. Last season was a second straight year in a row that Tom has failed to play more than 11 games, and over the past five seasons has only played 55 games. He is so important to the Sea Eagles side, which we will touch on shortly. Uh, but again, their reliance on Tommy Turbo really comes back to bite them uh, when he does go down with injury. Looking at their gains for 2024, the big one right at the top there is obviously Luke Brooks, who comes across from the Tigers. He'll be partnering Daily Cherry Evans in the halves this year and will hopefully fill that gap left by Kieran Foran. They obviously tried with uh, Schuster last year in that sixth jersey uh, with mixed results, but having an experienced half like Luke in there I think will do wonders for the Sea Eagles, and I'm very excited to see how he goes. Uh, in terms of other gains, Bailey Hodgson joins from the Newcastle Knights. Itasi James also joins from the West Tigers. Uh, Jackson Polo joined, I believe, late last season from the Sydney Roosters. Tommy Talau, also from the West Tigers, has come across, uh, as well as Corey Waddell from the Bulldogs, which is a great buy for the Sea Eagles, who do lack a bit of depth through the middle. And looking at their losses uh, for 2024, Morgan Harper has moved on to the Parramatta Eels. Uh, Sean Kempe has joined the South Sydney Rabbitohs. Kalma Tuolangi is also off to the Parramatta Eels. Uh, and the young fullback K.O. Weeks has moved on to the Canberra Raiders. Really good recruitment in my eyes. I think a lot of the players uh, Manly have lost, they have replaced very well or didn't necessarily need to replace that exact position. Obviously, Luke Brooks is going to be super important to the Sea Eagles' success this year. Uh, and all of those other players they've signed really do bring some much needed depth to their lineup. So without any further ado, let's just get stuck into my predicted teams list for round one. Starting first, of course, at fullback, Tommy Turbo. So as I just touched on, Tom only managed to play 11 games last season. That's the second consecutive year in a row where he's failed to play more than 11 games. Really disappointing not only for him, but for the club as well. His management of their defensive structure alongside his freakish talent, speed and strength is really second to none. I mean, you look at those stats, right? 193 meters per game, 10 tries in those 11 games and 41 tackle breaks. Great stats for such a short amount of time. And a great stat that shows you just how important he is to the Sea Eagles is their win percentage with Tom. So in the last five years, he has played 55 games. Uh, when he is playing, the Sea Eagles have a 65% win rate. And without Tommy, they only have a 34.4% win rate, which really shows how important he is to that side. Fingers crossed Tom can play more than 11 games in 2024, uh, not only for Manly and their fans, but rugby league fans in general, because he really is one of the best in the game. Moving now to wing, Jason Saab coming in at number two, uh, 14 tries in his 19 games last year, averaging 123 meters, absolute speedster, arguably the fastest man in the NRL right now. Personally, I would love to see the NRL do an end of season uh, sort of combine like they do in the American sports, where they'd have a 100 meter dash, maybe a passing comp, kicking comp, etc. Because I would love to see all of the fast wingers in the game go at it over 100 meters. Uh, but trust me, I'm putting all my money on Saab. Moving now into the centers, at number three, I've gone Ruben Garrick. Ruben can obviously play in a majority of positions. Uh, he's covered fullback in the past. He's played at wing, uh, in the centers, you name it. He's Mr. Fantastic. Great goal kicker too. He can, he can strike them from anywhere. He played 21 games for the Sea Eagles last year with 12 tries, 149 meters per game, and 72 tackle breaks. I'm sure there'll be plenty of people that will have him out on the wing, uh, but for me, I've got him starting at center in round one. And the other center I've gone for is Cola. Uh, 19 games for the Sea Eagles last year with eight tries, 72 tackle breaks, and an average of 150 meters. A really, really good year for Cola last year. He also spent a bit of time at fullback last year covering in for injuries, but is an out and out center with blistering pace, really, really strong runs, and is really hard to stop down that edge. And the other winger I've gone for is Jackson Paolo. Uh, now, he joined from the Roosters late last season and didn't get that much game time. I know he does seem to get a bit of hate. I'm not quite sure why. You look at some of those stats and they're pretty good. Six tries in 12 games, 22 tackle breaks for an average of 145 meters. 
Uh, this position will also be hotly contested. You've got the likes of Christian Tuipolotu, uh, obviously Ruben Garrick as well. And not only just the wing position, I think the centres in general. Obviously they do have Tommy Talao coming over from the West Tigers who plays centre. You've also got Vega on the wing as well. Um, they've got plenty of depth there. Brad Parker too, centre. Um, so I do think there's a lot of ways you can skin this cat. I wouldn't be surprised if they do go with Garrick on the wing and Talao in the centres. Personally, this is what I would like to see come round one. Moving now into the halves, the big one, the big fish they have landed. Luke Brooks joins the Manly Sea Eagles after spending 10 years at the West Tigers. The Sea Eagles really struggled to fill that gap left by Kieran Foran, and I do think that Brooks is the one to save it. He's a really solid, quick, fleet-footed half who really hasn't had the best support system over the last few years. And when he does get the opportunity to show his running game, it is up there with the best. I do also think the move from halfback to 5'8 will be good for Brooks. He can really express that running game a lot more and leave that long kicking to Daly Cherry Evans, but he's obviously got that in his back pocket should he need to pull it out. I'm super happy for Luke Brooks. He's obviously done it very tough at the West Tigers over the last few years, and I'm really looking forward to seeing him in a new system and what he can bring to the Sea Eagle side in 2024. And obviously in at number seven, Daily Cherry Evans, DCE, the man that time does not affect. He was absolutely unreal again in 2023. At 34 years of age, he's still putting up phenomenal numbers. 22 games for the Sea Eagles last season, including nine tries, uh, three of which I believe were his first career hat trick. 16 forced dropouts with 18 try assists and 19 line breaks. Very similar to Turbo, if DCE is to go down, the Sea Eagles are a completely different side. His long kicking game is almost second to none. His knack for hitting a 40-20 at the right time is also second to none. I'm sure many people are wondering when time will finally catch up to Daly, but man, I don't see it happening anytime soon. He is a literal freak and still right at the top of the heap after all these years. Moving now to the Ford Pack, and I have no doubt everyone will have their differing opinions on how their Ford Pack will look. One of Manly's big issues last year was their depth in their Ford Pack. A lot of players playing in and out of positions or playing longer minutes than expected. Injuries obviously played a part in that, and hopefully if their player group can stay fit and healthy, they shouldn't have as many issues down the stretch. So starting prop for me, Taniela Paseca, uh, 18 games for the Sea Eagles last year, averaging 13 hit-ups per game for 140 meters. Real no-nonsense workhorse in that Manly Ford pack, and I do think should be given that first crack in the number eight jersey come round one. In at number nine, Lachlan Croker. He played 23 games for the Sea Eagles last year with six tries, four try assists, and five line break assists. Again, similar to Daly Cherry Evans, he can whip out that 40-20 kick from seemingly nowhere. A very, very underrated hooker in the game. Very crafty, very wily, very smart. Also has a very good running game and again can seemingly produce something out of nothing. And the other starting prop, I've gone Gerbo, Jake Travojevic. I know a lot of people may have Jake starting at lock. Personally, I'm a big, big fan of Jake playing prop. Uh, he played 18 games for the Sea Eagles last year. Again, dealing with some injuries in the later half of the season. Uh, one try, three tackle breaks, and averaging 10 hit-ups per game. Again, I wouldn't be mad if you had Jake starting at lock and had someone like uh, Matt Lodge, Josh Eloya, Sipley, etc. in that position. Uh, but again, I am a big fan of Jake at prop. He's an absolute tackling machine. He's an energizer bunny who just doesn't stop running. Uh, so for me, I'd like to see him start at number 10. Moving into the second row now, obviously number 11, big Hamoli Olakowatu, an absolute beast and easily one of Manly's best players last season. Uh, 10 tries in his 24 games. 11 line breaks, 9 line break assists, and averaging 127 running meters. I'm a big, big fan of this man. And so are the Sea Eagles, offering him a massive $900,000 per season deal for the next 8 years, meaning Olakowata will be at the club until the end of the 2031 season. I do think Hamoli was very close to making his Origin debut last year. I would have liked to have seen him given a crack personally, but again, his form in Clubland was very, very impressive and easily one of Manly's best last season, and I cannot wait to see him again in 2024. And the other starting second rower I've gone for is Josh Schuster. Now this will be highly contentious. Schuster obviously played at 5'8 last year for the Sea Eagles with mixed success. Uh, and following contract negotiations has agreed to sign on as a back rower for a monster deal, might I add. He played 15 games last season with two tries, one line break and 10 line break assists. 
Now, this is where it gets a bit tricky for me because they've obviously brought in the likes of Corey Waddell, who you think may slot into this role. But given the size of the contract they offered Schuster, I do think they'll want to get their money's worth. So I wouldn't be surprised having him start uh, at number 12. He obviously needs to bulk up and gain a bit of size. You know, you compare him to, say, Ola Kowats, and they're completely different body types. Uh, but I do think that his running game and even his kicking game potentially could be a big factor out on that edge. It's a tough one, and I'm not personally that sold on it. Uh, but I do think, again, based on the kind of money they're paying Schuster, they'll want to make sure they get their money's worth. You also have to take into consideration the fact that Schuster doesn't always train the best and has had issues with discipline and effort in the past. So I definitely wouldn't be surprised if Corey Riddell takes that spot in round one. So we'll have to wait and see, but for me, I've gone Schuster. And finally at lock, I've gone Josh Eloy A. Again, we just touched on it when we started the, the, the Ford pack and also again with Jake Trevojevic. There's plenty of ways you can skin this cat. Eloy A played a lot of lock for the Eagles last season. Uh, he did play a bit of prop towards the end as they were dealing with injuries, but I don't mind Eloy A in at lock. Played 16 games for the Sea Eagles last year with one try, 17 tackle breaks, and averaging 98 meters per game. Again, there are plenty of ways you could skin this cat with the Manly board pack. Uh, they've got yeah, potentially more than they had last year, especially if their players can stay fit and healthy. So there you have it. That is my predicted teams list for the Manly Sea Eagles come round one of the 2024 NRL season. Thank you, as always, for watching. Let me know what your predicted teams list is in the comments below. Uh, leave a like on the video, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.